I want to thank my colleague for introducing this, this very important bill that, uh, as, as he reminds us, uh, brings about a, a level of equity to our, our Alaska Native veterans that um, really have been left out of this process. And uh, I thank not only uh, him for bringing this forward, but for Congressman Young over in the House, who uh, uh, over the course of years, the Alaska delegation has stood uh, very firm and very consistently in trying to advance uh, this measure and to, to address the inequity that we see. So thank you, Senator Sullivan. Uh, the, there are two bills, uh, Alaska-related bills, that are before the committee here today. And, and Mr. Chairman, I appreciate the, uh, the opportunity to have the hearing before the subcommittee. The, the, the measure that Senator Sullivan has, has spoken to, S-1955, uh, is one that I am proudly co-sponsoring. Uh, the other bill that I'd like to speak to this, this afternoon is S-872, which also addresses an inequity with our Alaska Natives. And this is our Alaska Native, um, excuse me, the, uh, the inequity relates to our Alaska Native Claims Settlement Act, where there were five communities, five southeastern communities that, uh, that did not receive the, the same level of benefit that others did throughout the state. I would like to just give very briefly a little bit of the background, because I think it puts in context what we're dealing here. Back in, in 1971, uh, Congress passed the Alaska Native Claims Settlement Act, and this was to settle the aboriginal uh, land claims of our Alaska Natives. And it, it pioneered, really, a new method of, of how the United States would, would provide for uh, redress for compensation for, for Native Americans, and it cleared the way for Alaska Natives to receive 44 million acres and $962 million of compensation. And the land and the money then came through 13 different regional corporations, as well as 220 village and urban corporations. The, the act specifically established village corporations for any town that had 25 Native residents in 1970, and, and they had to meet other criteria as well. But for, for unexplained reasons, and believe me, we've, we've gone back through all the legislative history out there, there were five towns in southeastern Alaska. Ketchikan, where I was born, Wrangell, where I spent some growing up years, Petersburg, Tenakee, and Haines. These five villages were not allowed to form village or urban corporations. Even though there were 10 other villages, um, plus Juneau, our, our capital, and Sitka, our, a former capital, that were allowed such corporations. So as I mentioned, the, 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 the history on this, I think, is somewhat complex. But there is no, there's no debate as to whether or not these communities met the historic criteria as Native communities. It's, it's pretty close to impossible to suggest that Ketchikan or, or Wrangell or Haines, for example, were somehow or other significant significantly different from Juneau or from Sitka um, in their native traditions or their native versus non-native uh, populations. It is, uh, there's been a, a, a review, a study by the University of Alaska's Institute of Social and Economic Research. It found that village corporation shareholders in Southeast Alaska gained about $2,900 more in dividends a year than the at-large regional corporation shareholders and urban corporation shareholders gained about another $240 million, or excuse me, $240 more per year. I, I think it's important because there's, it's been argued that somehow or other the 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 landless natives have, have not been placed at an, a disadvantage in terms of a financial equity because of the, their status at large. And this is something that I hope that we can get out on the record today, that in fact there is a disparity. So it is time that we address the inequity for these roughly 3,500 Alaska natives who were not authorized to form village corporations and have been disadvantaged effectively for about 40 years now. And what we do in this legislation, and I'm pleased that Senator Sullivan is, is co-sponsoring this with us, is to, is to set a framework to begin the discussions on, on how to address this. I think Senator Sullivan has outlined very clearly the history of the uh, 
of the legislation that he has introduced and the need, the imperative to ensure that those veterans who served us so honorably uh, are not further disadvantaged, that they too will be able to receive uh, their allotments and not be, not be kept out. Right now, about 400 of the 2,800 natives who served during the war um, have been able to qualify for land. Um, that's, that's just not right. And so the legislation that he has introduced solves these inequities. It also, it also protects the parks, the monuments, and conservation units. We're not talking about taking land from the conservation units, taking lands from the parks to give to, to our Alaska Natives. It would allow Natives who served at any point during the war to gain their lands, acknowledging just how difficult it was for them to apply for and to qualify for lands when, when they were serving in our military. So what we're doing today with these two measures is to bring about, again, a level of equity and fairness to Alaska's Natives people. I have been working for a decade to, to try to finally bring about equity uh, to our Sea Alaska shareholders, and we were able to complete that legislation last year. And uh, it's good to have that one done. But I made a commitment and a pledge that we would not forget our landless natives, and we will never forget our, our, our native veterans that have served us so honorably. Uh, Mr. Chairman, there are two uh, Alaska witnesses that I would like to just very briefly uh, introduce and welcome to the committee. Mr. Leo uh, Barlow, who is from Wrangell, he is here today uh, uh, on behalf of the Southeast Alaska Landless Native Corporation. He's come a long way to be here uh, to speak to us today and has been engaged and, and a strong representative uh, on this issue for, for a long, long time, and I truly appreciate him joining us. He's also joined by another Alaskan, Mr. Buck Lindekugel. Uh, Buck has been before the committee uh, previously. He is uh, an attorney with the Southeast Alaska Conservation Council, and uh, he too has, has traveled a long way to be with him, be with us today. So I welcome them both. Well, thank you, Madam Chairman. I'd ask those two, as well as the other four witnesses, to please uh, come to the witness table so we can get on to the next portion of the uh, hearing.